In this lesson, I'll be showing you how to use the standard reduction potentials table in order to determine which substance is oxidized and which substance is reduced, and therefore which substance is the anode versus which is the cathode in a galvanic cell. Now, first of all, there's a table 4B and a table 4A, both standard reduction potentials tables. They are inverses or opposites of each other. Most schools use table 4B, and that's what I'll be using in my lessons. These tables list substances and they arrange them in order of their ability to act as reducing agents or oxidizing agents. So if you take a look at the table, the table consists of a bunch of half reactions. And I just want to point out that these are called half reactions because we have the ability to write them either from left to right or from right to left. So say, for example, I take the following half reaction. Let's take this one over here, the one containing sodium. I can either write that reaction from left to right. In other words, if I decide to write it from left to right, to so read from left to right, we start with this Na plus plus E minus. So the sodium ion plus one electron gives me solid sodium Na. Or I can take that exact same reaction and write it in a reverse order. In other words, I can write it from right to left. So what I mean by that is same reaction, but now we start with whatever is written on the right hand side. So sodium, then we put our arrow and then we write down whatever is on the left hand side. Na plus plus E minus. If you take a look at the two half reactions that I've written above over here, you will see that it's the same reaction. One is written forwards and one the other is written backwards. One of these represents oxidation. The other represents reduction. I hope you can tell which is which. The one at the top, this one here in blue, this represents reduction. Why? Because reduction is gain of electrons. Remember oil rig? Reduction is gain, rig gaining electrons. So this sodium ion, Na+, is being reduced. The sodium ion is gaining this electron to form sodium. So writing a reaction, as you read it on the table, from left to right, when you do that, you are writing a reduction half reaction. If we reverse that, so we start with Na, we start with sodium, then we write an arrow and we say Na+, plus, plus E-, minus. can you see that sodium is losing this electron? Sodium is being oxidized. Oil rig, oxidation is loss. Oil, O-I-L, oxidation is loss. So here the sodium is being oxidized. So this is how you would write down an oxidation half reaction. If it confuses you, which way is oxidation, and which one is reduction? Just think of it when the electrons are on the left-hand side, it's reduction. When the electrons are on the right-hand side, it's oxidation. Also, please note that if you take a look at the table, all of these half reactions are written with a double arrow inside the table. But when we write an oxidation half reaction or a reduction half reaction, we write it using a single arrow. And the arrow is always going to point to the right. So I'm going to be showing you how we can look at a galvanic cell like this, or maybe one like this, or maybe one like this, to determine which electrode is the anode versus which is the cathode. And it all comes back to this table. Something else that's very important that I want to highlight about this table is that they have two arrows on them. The first arrow is on the right hand side and it's pointing upwards. And the arrow says increasing strength of reducing agents. You can see the arrow is pointing up. If you are a reducing agent, in previous videos we discussed that if you are a strong reducing agent, that means that you will be oxidized. It's always the opposite. So strong reducing agents are oxidized and then this arrow is pointing down. So as you go down, you are a stronger oxidizing agent. So if you are a strong oxidizing agent, you are reduced. So what this means is the higher up you are on the table, the more likely you are to be oxidized. And that's because the higher up you are on the table, according to the arrows on the table, you are a stronger reducing agent, so more likely to be oxidized. And therefore, the lower you are on the table, the more likely you are to be reduced because you're a stronger oxidizing agent. And in the previous video, we looked at the zinc copper half cell. So if you missed that video, please watch the previous video in this playlist. If you look at the table 4B, you will note that zinc is higher up on the table than copper. What that means is zinc is oxidized. So as you go higher, higher, higher on the table, you are a stronger oxidizing or stronger reducing agent. Sorry. So you, therefore you will be oxidized. Then copper is lower down on the table. 
So therefore, you will be reduced. You are a stronger oxidizing agent. So let's take a look at a few more examples and I will show you how to use the table to figure out which is oxidized and which is reduced and therefore which is the anode and which is the cathode. So taking a look at this a galvanic cell, we have a copper and then lead cell, CUPB. Now, a lot of students also make the mistake of thinking that the anode is always on the left-hand side. That's not always the case. You have to consult your table 4B. So step one is to look for your substances on the table. So we're going to look for copper and we're going to look for lead and we're going to circle them or highlight them on our table. So starting at the top of the table, I'm looking for copper or lead. And if I look down through all of my options over here, I can see lead over there, there's PB. So I'm going to circle PB. And then when looking for copper, you'll see that there's a few options. And I did mention this in a previous video, but this one option is Cu plus, and this is Cu2 plus. That option's not going to work. We need to look for an option that has Cu2 plus and Cu. That is this option. The reason why I want that option, so the 0, 0,34 option we use literally 99% of the time. The reason why is because if you take a look at my cell, I've got solid copper metal, so Cu, and then in my electrolytes, I've got copper 2 plus ions. So neutral copper, Cu, to Cu 2 plus. Here we've got neutral Cu to Cu 2 plus. So I've selected the correct one. When in doubt, choose the 0, 0,34 value. This value matches with that half reaction. Now what we're going to do, so step one, locate them on your table. Step two, which one is higher? Lead is higher. This one is higher up on the table. So you start top right hand side. You always stop start top right hand side. So in other words, top on the right hand side of the table and you look for the first one that you circled. It's clear that I circled lead. So what I mean is lead here, PB, is higher up than CU. So the first one that you come across, that substance will always be the one that is oxidized and therefore it will always be the anode because at the anode is where oxidation happens. So this half cell over here is my anode. How did I know that? Because anox, at the anode, oxidation occurs. And we know that PB is being oxidized how do we know that PB is being oxidized? Because on the table, it's higher up. Therefore, PB is what we call the stronger reducing agent, the stronger reducing agent. And it means that PB will be accepting electrons. Now, again, according to the steps that I have showed you, I know this example uses zinc and copper, but in our example, we have got lead and copper. So instead of zinc, we've got lead. So it is Pb2 plus plus 2e minus, and then it's got the little arrows and it's got Pb. So Pb is at the top. So oxidation takes place higher up, stronger reducing agent, and the reaction that is on top. Read what it says here. The oxidation half reaction must always be written from right to left, as we discussed in the beginning of the video. So again, right to left. So what that means is we're going to write PB first. So we're going to start off by writing everything that's on the right hand side. We're writing it from right to left. Then an arrow, then PB2 plus, plus 2E minus. And just take notes, I'm writing it with a single arrow. And this is representing the oxidation half reaction. PB is being oxidized. PB is losing electrons. It's the stronger reducing agent. Then we go back to our table. We've written our oxidation half reaction. Now you start reading or now you start looking on the left hand side and you move down, 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 down until you hit your second half reaction. Your second half reaction is your reduction half reaction. And your reduction half reaction is always written or read from left to right. So you write down the stuff on the left hand side first, Cu2 plus, plus 2E minus, then an arrow and then Cu. Now, what's very important to take note of here is that it is the copper 2 plus ions that is accepting the electrons. It is the copper 2 plus ions that are being reduced. The copper 2 plus ions, they are the oxidizing agent. So in my diagram, PB was my anode because anode oxidation. Cu is my cathode. Why? Because of red cat. Remember red cat? Reduction takes place at the cathode. So our half reaction, once more, was Cu2 plus plus 2E minus gives me Cu. What this means is copper 2 plus is reduced. Copper 2 plus is accepting 
or gaining my electrons, and therefore it is my oxidizing agent. Note, when we're writing a reduction half reaction, the electrons are on the left-hand side. We are gaining these electrons. Let's try another example. Pause the screen and see if you can try it. Get our table 4B. We've got a silver nickel cell. AG and NI. So step one, look for AG, look for NI on your table and circle them. So if you look with me, you can see, if I take a look, we have to look really carefully. Here's nickel, NI. There's nickel. And then if you keep scrolling, keep looking, you will find silver all the way down there. So we've located the two on our table. Now you start top right and you read down. Which one do you come across first? Well, we definitely come across nickel first. What that means is that nickel will be oxidized. Nickel is the anode. The substance on the top right of your table, that's the first one you come across. That is the one that is oxidized because it's the stronger reducing agent. Remember, this arrow here on our table points up, increasing strength of reducing agents. So nickel, that is my anode over here. And as you know, in a galvanic cell or a voltaic cell, the anode is negatively charged, just as a side note. That makes silver the cathode, which means it's got a positive charge. So that's how I also know the charge of the electrode. So anode, nickel is the anode. So nickel is oxidized. We can also say that nickel is the stronger reducing agent or nickel is a reducing agent. And now how do you write the half reaction? The oxidation half reaction is always written from right to left. So you write down the Ni first because it's on the right hand side, then the arrow, and then whatever's on the left hand side. Remember, your arrow is always going to point to the right. Okay, it's a double arrow here, but you must always write it with a single arrow. There we go. Then we continue moving down the table. Now our oxidation half reaction is done. Now we jump to the left hand side of the table. We read down, 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 down until we hit the reduction half reaction. And remember, that's the one that we read from left to right. So in other words, Ag plus plus E minus gives me Ag. So you read it normally. Reduction is always read normally from left to right. What this means is that in this case, it is my silver ions. It is my Ag plus, my silver ions that are reduced. Not my silver. My silver is not being reduced. My silver is not the thing that is gaining the electrons. It is my silver ions that are gaining the electrons. They are being reduced. Or we can say that they are the oxidizing agents. And this is the reduction half reaction. Now, what about something like this? When you see something like this, don't panic. This is still a galvanic cell. The reason why it looks a little bit different is because we are pumping a gas and using that as one of our half cells. Because we are using hydrogen gas over here, you can see I've got hydrogen gas and I've got H plus ions, hydrogen ions down here. I need some sort of a metal as an electrode. Because I'm working with gas, I just need a metal to act as a surface for my either my oxidation or my reduction happen, uh, reactions to happen on. It need, those things need to happen on a surface, on a metal. So we use what we call an inert metal. So inert, we spot it like this. Inert means unreactive. It's not going to react. This metal itself will not be oxidized or reduced, but it just acts as a surface for oxidation and reduction to take place on. And we generally use something like platinum. Okay, we can also use carbon or graphite, but platinum is a very common one. So everything else stays the same. You look for your two substances on the table. In this case, magnesium is one of them. And then magnesium and the Mg2 plus ions. Remember, these go together. So you're looking for a half reaction that has magnesium on one side and Mg2 plus on the other side. Okay. Then the other half reaction that you're looking for will include hydrogen on the one side and H plus ions on the other side. You will not actually see platinum anywhere on the table. It won't be involved in this half reaction. So we're looking for one of our half reactions that contain this and the other that contains this. We've got magnesium on the table. Let's just circle that one quickly. Magnesium over there. And then our other one was hydrogen. And just by the way, hydrogen, the hydrogen gas over here is always in the middle. It's bolded. I explain why in a separate video. There we go. There's the two. Now, once again, start on the top right. So we're going to start up here and then you look which one comes first. So you start top right and you read down. Oh, we hit magnesium. Magnesium comes first. It's on the top. It's higher up. So that means magnesium is oxidized, which means that magnesium is the anode because anox. Remember, anox. 
how do we write down the half reaction? We always write it from right to left. So magnesium's on the right hand side, so write that first, then an arrow, then we write all of that. Mg, two plus, plus two E minus. Then you carry on reading down the table, but now you're on the left hand side until you hit the second reaction, which is the hydrogen reaction over here. So we read it from left to right. So it is 2H plus, it's the hydrogen ions that are reduced. They accept these electrons and they form hydrogen gas like that. And because H plus, because this is lower down, it's reduction. Reduction takes place at the cathode. So as you can see, they don't always do the anode or the cathode on a particular side. They can switch it up. So this, like I said, is my anode. This, like I said, is my cathode. There's your oxidation half reaction. Magnesium is oxidized. Magnesium is a reducing agent. Magnesium loses electrons. And then my cathode, we have got our H plus ions. It's two H plus because they balance it. Our H plus ions, these ones over here, they are being reduced, they accept these electrons and they form hydrogen gas. And that's actually why we see the little bubbles over here in the cathode half cell, because hydrogen gas is being produced. I hope that this has helped you learn how to read the table and how to write oxidation and reduction half reactions, and therefore how to determine which electrode is the anode versus which is the cathode. I'll see you in more videos on this playlist for more electrochemistry. Bye everybody.